Hello everybody and welcome back. So we're just going to pick up right where we left off on this problem, uh, 13.1a. We've run through this ANOVA exercise and we have found that we do have sufficient evidence here to reject that null hypothesis, which of course means that at least one of those samples are different from the other. So now we're going to find out which one is it? So we're going to employ a technique called Fisher's LSD. This is similar to what we did if you went through module 12, what we did when we were looking at the equality across multiple population proportions. And there, if we rejected the null, well, then we wanted to find out which proportion is different. Same idea here. We reject the null. We have reason to believe, we have evidence to believe that at least one of those means are different. Which one is it? So Fisher's LSD can be a relatively straightforward uh, set of tests. We're going to set this up as a series of pairwise comparisons. So what does that mean? Well, we have three samples. We're going to test all possible pairs of those samples in hopes of finding where the difference lies. So here we are going to set up our three tests. I want to see is mu A equal to mu B, yes or no. I want to see maybe mu A is equal to mu C, yes or no. And finally, I want to see if mu B is equal to mu C. So once again, with only three samples, we only have three possible pairs. If you have four samples, well then you have six possible pairs. And as the number of samples increases, so too does the number of pairs, but much more rapidly. So again, keeping it to three, three samples just keeps things a little bit simpler for us. But this technique is usable for as many samples as you might have. So to do this test, our test statistic is perhaps the simplest test statistic of all of those that we've looked at. The test statistic is simply the point estimate of the difference in each sample, between each sample means. So when I'm comparing samples A and B, that test statistic is just the difference of those sample means. We're going to use a critical value approach. There is a p-value approach, a t-test approach to doing this. Here I'm going to use the critical value approach. And that critical value goes by the name LSD, least significant difference. And the formula for this is T alpha divided by 2, because these are all two-tailed tests, so I need alpha divided by 2, times the square root of MSE and 1 over each of our sample sizes. Now once more, having identical sample sizes across our three treatments makes this a little bit quicker. If I had different sample sizes and NI was always different from NJ, I would need to calculate a separate LSD for each of those tests that have different sample sizes. But for our exercise, all of our tests have the same number of observations. I can calculate LSD once and use that LSD for all of our tests. So let's go ahead, we'll calculate our test statistics first. So I'm comparing samples A and B, so I need to come back up here. And I'm just looking at these sample means. So 6 and 5.56, so that just gives me 0.44, so I'll write that in here. Next we're looking at mu A and mu C, so that's 6 minus 733, 1 and a third. And finally, we're comparing B and C. So and I'm comparing B and C, 
minus 7 and a third is 1.77. And yes, I am only interested in the absolute value, so I'm ignoring the negative sign on those. Now, our LSD, we need that critical T, alpha divided by 2. First question, of course, what are our degrees of freedom? Degrees of freedom always corresponds with the estimate of variance. Our estimate of variance here is MSE. So what are the degrees of freedom for MSE? Here I can see those degrees of freedom. 1.677. That's not degrees of freedom. Our MSE is 1.677. Our degrees of freedom is over here. 24. It's been highlighted so many times it's hard, hard to see. So there's our degrees of freedom. 24. MSE is 1677. So I'm going to go down to our T tables because I need to find that critical T for 22, 24 degrees of freedom. Alpha, by, alpha divided by 2. Let's use alpha 0.05 just to keep things familiar. So I'm going to come down to my t tables and I'm looking for 24 degrees of freedom alpha divided by 2 0.025 so where this comes down here I see my critical value 2.064 so I have there 2.064 my mean squared error we saw is 1.667 and my samples all had nine observations in them. And once again, if our samples were different sizes, we'd have a different LSD for each of those pairs that have different sizes. So let's go ahead and calculate this. One ninth plus one ninth of course is two ninths times 1.667 and then I'm going to take the square root of that and multiply by, by 2.064. This gives me my LSD equal to 1.256. Okay, so we have our test statistic. We have our critical value. Our rejection rule is that if our test statistic is greater than or equal to that LSD we reject. So now I can just go through our different comparisons. I can see here this one is less than. I am not going to reject that first test. I have no reason to believe there's a difference between our two types of toothpaste or of tooth whiteners. However, I reject on the second test, so the type A is different from type C, the control, and certainly I can reject on the next one as well. There's a difference between type B and the control. So we've identified of our three different samples which one is different. Now coming back to the problem, because we want to interpret this always in the context of the problem, we have reason to believe that these two are not statistically different from each other, but they are different from the control. Now, if we go into our problem and we see that, well, they were trying to determine the effectiveness because they only wish to produce and market one of them. Well, what we found here is that there is a difference between these two tooth whiteners and the control group, but we don't know, we don't have any evidence to show that there's a difference between those two types. So it doesn't really help them answer their question other than to say, yes, your tooth whiteners are different than the control, but between your two whiteners, we have no way of knowing, we don't have any evidence to show that there's actually a difference between them. So that is a complete ANOVA, including the Fisher's LSD, where we identified specifically, once we saw that there was a difference, we used the Fisher's LSD here to identify where that difference exists. 
Okay, thank you all for watching. I hope that this was helpful. These ANOVAs combined with the Fisher's LSD. Again, these are a tedious, time-consuming type of problem to do with practice. You know, get into a routine and I'm no problem. I'm losing my voice. Time to end this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.